So this video is about incomplete dominance and uh, it's a little bit different than co-dominance because this is where the blending sort of occurs and this is where uh, you have this mesh of colors um, when you have both alleles expressed at the same time. So how this is different than your co-dominant is that from the video, uh, previous video in co-dominance both dominant alleles will express at the same time equally or will just show up at the same time. So in, when you see something that looks like pink it doesn't necessarily mean that it has blended from a red to white but more because it has the red color and the white allele color um, showing shown up and the illusion that looks pink but in incomplete dominance this is where both alleles are have the intermediate ground where you have sort of the blending that happens. So one really good example is the snapdragon flowers that you can see in this picture and you can see that there's a, lots of variations of different colors and uh, here's the first question. If a red snapdragon flower crosses with a white snap uh, dragon flower, what would the phenotype of the offspring be? So if we were to draw the phenotype, uh, I mean the genotype of this, the red one would have the letter R. And because this one has to have a dominant and a recessive one, the white one is going to be a recess re recessive trait. This is a, um, a given uh, a fact in this question. And um, what happens is that when you mix these two together, let's see what happens. If you have your R and an R, this is your homozygous dominant for red. And then to show white, you have your homozygous recessive for, for white. And complete this Punnett square, you're going to see that you're going to have uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, and uppercase, lowercase. So this heterozygous does not show red or white, but actually shows an intermediate blended version that it is pink. And this actually puzzled a lot of people because then a lot of um, geneticists think that maybe there is this blending hypothesis where the traits actually blend. And um, that, in fact, is actually false because if you were to take the first generation of this one, this is my first generation, and if you were to cross it with itself or with another plant from the first generation, let's see what happens. That's actually our uh, second question. So if the first generation, the F1 generation offspring, were to cross with each other, what would the genotype and the phenotype be for the second generation? So remember from the previous slide, the first gener generation of this um, incomplete dominance is that you will have uppercase and lowercase r. So if you were to take the genotype, this genotype, and crosses it with another plant from that same generation, which is pink, you will have a heterozygous um, genotype. And if you were to fill in the Punnett squares like this, I'm just let me finish my grid, you have rr, this is a homozygous dominant, and then you have a heterozygous, heterozygous, and two homozygous recessive. So why that blending hypothesis doesn't work is that because your white color will actually show back up in your um, second generation, and also your red color, just pure red, will show back up as well. And you will also have some mixtures of the pink. So this is to say that both alleles are, when they're expressed, you have the blended version, but not necessarily that they are um, going to be blended completely in that there's no more red or white in the genotype. It's just to show that when you have both allele expressed with this genotype, you will have that blended version, but it still carries the recessive gene and also the dominant gene, which you can get back to get the dominant homozygous dominant red or the homozygous recessive white. So that's what incomplete dominance is. So hopefully this video has helped you with that.